If you can come with me in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We did a series of 10 Sundays and then of other 10 Sundays, so that's 20 Sundays. So let's try and do that in one session. Hallelujah. But I really believe God wants to speak to us about that in this season. Profitable, permissible. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23. Please mark it in your Bible. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. That's the NIV. That is the other translation. My brother, my sister, and I walk with God. A lot of things is permissible. And especially when we walk according to the law. When you just think about the word and think what is right and what is wrong. Then you will see a lot that is permissible. That you are allowed to do, but it's not profitable. It doesn't have a lot of meaning. So there's the good will of God, but there's a pleasing and the perfect will of God. So you can do what is good. You can do what is good. But there's a level that you can go into that you really need Holy Spirit to open it up for you. There's a level that you can go into that you really need Holy Spirit to bring a sensitivity in you to understand how to get into that place. Profitable that what you bring forth is a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. That what you bring forth is really that you are building church with God. You're not in the church, but you are building church with God. Hello? You're not praising God, but what you do is, in your praises, there's an impact in the spirit and things change in the spirit because you praising God. If you're praising God, I mean, that's good. You're supposed to. But there's a praising God, there's a worshiping of God that bring a change in the heavenlies. There's a prayer that is good that you are surrendering to God. And there's a prayer that from surrendering, there's an impact out there and things in the heavenlies change because of your prayer, because of what you declare. The one is permissible, the other one is profitable. And then after saying a lot of this, he, he goes into 1 Corinthians 12, I want to start with a specific verse. Verse 7. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And for, in a different translation he's saying, for that what is profitable. For that what has meaning. Different manifestations, different gifts of the Spirit given for that what is profitable. For that what has a next level of meaning to go into. Holy Spirit is so ready to work in us. He's so ready to do a work in us. Now when you look at the fruit of the Spirit, first of all, my brother, my sister, it's not the fruits of the Spirit. There's not nine fruits of the Spirit. There's one fruit with a lot of facets. Because Holy Spirit, as we see in the Word, and we said many times, Holy Spirit will remind you of the words of God and it will reveal the words of God to you. Now that is the agenda of the Holy Spirit till Jesus come again. Now if Holy Spirit can reveal Christ to you through his word, the fruit that will come forth will be you will see Christ. Because he will remind you of the words of Christ. He will explain the words of Christ and the loving word is Christ. So the fruit of the Spirit is Christ. But then, Galatians 5.22, he talks about nine different facets of the fruit. So it's nine different facets of the character of Christ when we look at the fruit. In the fruit, always there will be more of Christ. Christ will be more in the center when you go with the agenda of the Holy Spirit. So I can do the right thing or I can go with Holy Spirit agenda 
And I'm with the Holy Spirit agenda in what I do. You can do your work. Or you can be busy at your workplace with the agenda of the Holy Spirit. That is profitable, not just permissible. Are you with me? So please, let's get out of the, the, the law of religion. Let's get out of the law of what am I allowed to do, what not. Am I in trouble or am I not in trouble? Get that, let's get that mindset out. Because that's in a performance towards God. That's not in a relationship. But in a relationship, God has so much more for us. You are still here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to talk to you first of all about the fruit. I think so. Let's see. Yeah. There's this course, please. Come to the training conference over the weekend. Ask the office if you want to do this course of 10 Sundays, of 10, 10 sessions. And each facet of the fruits are being dealt with. Now what we've done, I want to bring three main points to you. Vitality, stability, and quality. Everybody say vitality. Stability, quality. Now there's many facets, many ways that you can look at the fruits. And we will still, until Jesus comes, look at so many different facets. But for today, I want to put it in three categories. Vitality, there's an energy, there's an energy, there's a passion, there's a driving force that God wants to release in you through the Holy Spirit. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Hey? Zechariah 4, 6. Now with that, so if God wants to release that energy, that force in you, I want to call it vitality. There's a vitality in you. So when you feel I'm, I'm totally out of it, I'm drained, then it is not just rest. Yes, rest is necessary. But in the time of rest, Lord, how did it happen that I went into what I had to do without your strength, without the vitality that you give. Teach me now, please, how to do it next time with the strength, with the energy, with the passion that you provide through your spirit. Because that brings honor to you. That brings honor to God. Amen. So vitality, first word, passion. You can write down the word passion. Now, out of the fruit of the Spirit, what's, what's the word for passion? Love. Tell your neighbor, love. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5. In 2 Corinthians 5, we, we see that we are driven by love. Other word, other translation, compelled. Gedreif. Gedring, dear liefde. So there's a compelling force, there's a driving force in me. And this driving force in me, this passion in me, is called love. I lost my love um, for life and for God. It's impossible unless Jesus turned his back on you and you, he's not with you anymore, you're on your way to hell. But in you lives the God that is called love. So the passion of heaven is in you. There's a passion that is from heaven. And that passion is a fire. And that fire will deal with the destructive fires. That is passion that is called lust. Passion that is driven by fear. Where I can be driven by fear to be accepted. Driven by anxiety. Driven by this. Driven by whatever a lot of other rubbish. Stress, anxiety, yeah, like we said. So I can be driven by all of that, but don't fight that. Get into the passion that God provided for you and let love drive out the fear. Let the fire of God deal with the fire from hell. Are you with me? So you can be so easily connected with the fire from hell in the context of religion. But I need the fire of the Holy Spirit to deal with that. And that is passion. You have the passion of God. The energy, the motivation that is in the Father is in you. Is in you. 
At the retreat, we're going to look at the mind of Christ, how God thinks, what is his desires, what is his purposes, how can you see his purposes, how you can you experience and, and go with his desires and go with his way of thinking. But that's at the retreat. I hope you will be there. Passion. Next one. Progress. Progress. So in the fruit of the spirit. I want to go with progress, but I want to say peace. Now, how do we get into the word peace with progress? In your movement, in your that what you do, in that what you are being driven with. Let there be no progress in your life unless through the peace of God. Don't move anywhere. Don't go and do anything. Don't go for a great idea. If the peace of God is not there, that your progress must always be led by God's peace. Because you can have progress through doing a lot of work, through doing a lot of things, through a lot of giftings that's in your life, through a lot of good ideas. You can have progress through the vision of, that God has given you. And you can go with the vision. But you're not supposed to move at all unless you have the release from God. And that is through peace. Peace. When God will speak to you, and you're waiting on Him, it's not about waiting for an answer, it's about waiting on Him. And only when He gives you peace to do something, then you go for it. There must be no progress based on the excitement of what I see in how things, according to me, can work out. By faith, I can do this. Yes, by faith, you must go. But only if you have a release from the Spirit through peace. And the problem is, when Jesus says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world, not like the peace in the world. Because in the world... There's a peace that can, I can feel like, yeah, yes, now everything is fine. Now I understand everything. Now I'm with everything. But with God, many times his peace brings a lot of turmoil in my soul. When he gives you peace to do something and you know in your heart, I must do this. But in your soul, you manifest. If you never experience that, trust God that you will get into God's peace. Because then sometimes... It will happen like that. Only if your name is Jesus Christ, then it will just automatically be fine. But if it's God's peace, God's peace will many times challenge your security, challenge your safe place. Hello? So allow him to bring the progress in you. But there's no progress unless with the peace of God. Okay, there's passion through love. There's progress through peace. Amen? You have it? Third one? Potential. Oh, oh where well, we go. We're with, with the passion and the progress and the potential. Okay, third one is about the joy of the Lord. If you know you have someone and that person does not have the potential, cannot drive that car or that truck, or fly that airplane, and he gets into that airplane, you will have such a joy, especially if you know he's going to crash. Hell has a lot of joy about that. Uh, hello. But God has a joy over your life, even if you disappointed him, even if you did a lot of wrong. He can be disappointed about your choice of yesterday. But why? Is the joy of the Lord in your heart? Why is he still excited about your life? Even though you made a mess, man. Yesterday you made a mess. Because he sees the potential in you. He's excited because of the potential in you. He's excited about what he has placed in your heart. He's excited about how he believes in you, how tomorrow will be an excellent day, where he believes that you and him will walk together. The joy of the Lord and the joy in your life is based on potential, it's based on the faith, it's based on the fact that God has an excellent, excellent plan for your life. The joy goes with the potential. 
So when God needs to open it up for you, Holy Spirit needs to work in you, and you need to understand how to be excited in the midst of your circumstance. In the midst of your circumstance. It's because you know what He sees in you. You know He's excited about you. You know He believes in you. You know He's cheering you on for tomorrow. For tomorrow. For tomorrow. Amen? Can we go with that? You see that potential with the joy of the Lord. But many times people said in the past, Oh, I've lost my joy. Ach, that's okay. That's uh, emotion in your soul. But you never can lose the joy of the Lord. Because God does not change. Yesterday, today, forever the same. So the joy of the Lord is His excitement. God was, is, and forever will be love. God will always be excited about his dream. And in his dream, you and me. Are you with me? He is the Prince of Peace. And he will stay the Prince of Peace. Peace is available in your spirit. Because God is in your spirit. Amen. This is your vitality. This is your vitality. Because it's pushed into your heart. It is established in your heart. Passion, progress, potential. Everybody? Passion, Progress, potential. Great. Number two. Stability. Stability. You can throw the three. All three. Work, walk, wait. This is so that you can remember. Everybody say, work, walk, wait. Okay. Now that's the next three in the fruit of the Spirit. In your work, there must be a faithfulness. There must be a faithfulness. There must be a walk. Next one. Who wants to try that one? All with the crib notes of the previous session. Niemand. Self-control. Self-control. How do you get by with the thing of walk and self-control? And wait, that's easy. Patience. Patience. What needs to be established in your life when Holy Spirit work the fruit of the Spirit? What will be there? What will be there? What will be there? There will be a work that will not be consumed through fire. A work that will not be destroyed the day when you stand before God. Why? Because you were faithful in what God has given you. The one that wasn't faithful with God, what God has entrusted to them, what they've done on earth will be burnt away. They will be saved as through fire. But what they've done, rubbish, will be burned away. Will be destroyed. But in your work, there needs to be faithfulness. Two talents, what God has entrusted to you, you must be faithful so that you can give it back unto him. No, that's unfaithful, lazy servant. What God has entrusted to you, at least must double. That guy with a one talent, he gave all that money, all that gold, he gave it back to the master. He didn't steal anything, man. He didn't wara wara with it. But he was lazy, unfaithful. That's what the master called him. But the guy with the two talents, when it became four, only then he was called faithful servant. When the Holy Spirit worked, worked a faithfulness in you, that's part when that place when you're staying more dependent and more dependent, doing it more and more as if unto the Lord. Not for the leader that could be. You're a heart master and you reap where you haven't sown. That's what the guy with the one talent said. Remember? And the leader said, you are right. I am a heart master and I reap where I haven't sown. So who's right? One guy, the guy with the one talent. Who's wrong? The leader who lost everything. The one that was right lost everything. Because he had to serve as if unto the Lord. So you can just un justify your unfaithfulness in a, in a sick pride, in a, in a religious demonic thing. Not one of us. 
you can justify. And when you see yourself with thoughts, a lot of justification about this right, that wrong, this right, that. Just know you have fellowship with that devil. Tell him to go. But you come into a place of simplicity in believing the word and taking the word and be faithful in what God has entrusted to you so that it will multiply. Multiply. Are you with me? In your work and uh, faithfulness. Next one, in your walk. What did we say there? Self-control. You will walk in the flesh, you will walk in the spirit. I know, a lot of scripture about that. Romans 8 also. You will walk in the spirit, walk in the flesh. What's the difference? Walk in the flesh, you will be under control. You will under, be under the control of the flesh. You will be under the control of fear, under the control of lust, under the control of inferiority, rejection, under the control of religion, under the control of something. <sighs> or you will walk in the spirit. Romans 8. Not walk in the flesh, but walk in the spirit. Amen. And in the walk in the spirit, is you're under the control of the Holy Spirit. You're under the control of the Holy Spirit. So when you look at the fruit of the Spirit, please, guys, let's look at this. Hey, in my work, faithfulness, fruit of the Spirit. Because I'm doing my work with the Holy Spirit. In my walk, the work of the Holy Spirit is there. So in my walk, there will be a control. He will be in control. When I walk into the meeting tomorrow, when I walk into the studies, when I walk into the, the things that I need to do, it will be under the control of the Spirit. It will be under the control of the Spirit. Amen. Let it be so. And the wait, patience, wait, patience. Ish. I'm waiting for an answer. No. When David, in so many Psalms, he's talking about the horrific circumstances. And this is happening. He cannot sleep and he cannot this, that. And he feels like a worm and that, that. Oh, a lot of depressing, ridiculous situations. Go and look in the Psalms. A lot of stuff. And then right at the end, and he says, but I will wait for an answer from God. No. He would just say, I will wait on God. Because he is my strength, my this. Not I will wait for an answer. I will wait on God. Because my brother, my sister, when you wait for an answer, I don't know if you were small at one stage in your life also, very young. You know, when you want something, but your dad wants to speak to you. And you are there and, yes, daddy. Yes, yes. And you hear what he says, but and you turn around and you go, and he's like, hey, I'm not finished yet. Hey, I can only talk about me. Oh, that's when it starts to manifest. Hmm. Now the problem is <laughs> patience from the Holy Spirit is where when it's established, I will know when God releases me to go out of the conversation. You will have that capacity to know. I'm waiting on God and he says, you can go and do that. And then run. If you waited for an answer, you will do the good, permissible, but you will not do that what is profit, what is profitable. But if you wait on him, you didn't wait on an answer for an answer just. You will not run off just with an idea. That is from God. The idea is from God. But he wasn't finished speaking. He, he didn't release you from the conversation. But if you know how to wait on God. When God says we are finished now. Then you rise up and you go. Hello? So God says you can go and do that. But remember, look at this, look at this, look at this. Be careful with that and that and that. And let's do this together in this way from this point. If you just really waited on him and not just waited for an answer, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been such a hell of a mess. And then we say, "How? where is the God of love? And why did this happen now? And why did that happen now? But I had to wait on him. The Holy Spirit is not faithful, first of all, to give me the answer. The Holy Spirit is faithful to bring God in the center, 
to bring God in the center of your situation. So you wait on Him, on the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit with His agenda, when He, God is in the center from that place, the Holy Spirit will release you to go and do. Are you still here? Okay. So when you experience frustration, you don't understand why this frustration is there. You bind the devil because you want peace. But it's the Holy Spirit giving you the frustration. Because you're on your way to do something wrong. Because God didn't finish speaking. He, there was no, no, no. There was no CLR. There were no amen in that conversation. So you can go with the vision. But you're not going with the peace of God. Holy Spirit is going to teach us, especially in these days, how to do this. Amen. Wait, wait, wait on him. Because you have respect for him. That, that is a man with stability in his walk, in his work, in his waiting. You want the stability? Allow Holy Spirit to do that. Number three, quality. Quality, all three. Okay, that's the last three facets are the fruit of the Spirit. Integrity, intensity, identity. Okay, what are we left with? Goodness, kindness, and gentleness. Gentleness or meekness. Gentleness, kindness, goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So where will we find, uh, let's start with the identity. Identity is in goodness. How am I talking about that? I know identity is in Christ and all these facets must be found in him. But you know when God created you, he created the baboon. And praise God, you didn't come from the baboon. You come, came from God directly, straight. Not via baboon. Okay, hallelujah for that. Sometimes we act like baboon. But no, not even. Because some of the baboons, they are very clever actually clever and naughty but yeah hey you're wasting time what what are we saying identity so god created everything and it was good it was good it was good and then he created man and the first thing when he saw man and the identity of i've created you in my image in my likeness and god said it's very good very good god created something very good when he created you and looking at yourself and your identity as a human being you're looking at something very good that's what is in your spirit i'm not talking about huaras in your soul i'm talking about who you really are in your spirit reborn child of god very good so the goodness manifests first of all in your identity how you know you have seen Somebody saying, that is really a good person. But then you must articulate it and say, oh, how, what do you mean? Yes, this rechtige goeie means die. Oh, what do you mean? It's, it's like a little bit vague. Are you with me? If we say, he's friendly, we know exactly. He's patient, we know exactly. But how to say he's good, oh, what do you mean? It's about him, just him. Are you with me? So allow God's goodness to come through you because God is good. God is good. Be who he has called you to be. And God's goodness will be seen through your life. This is the fruit of the Spirit. So that Christ will be seen through you. Amen. Intensity, integrity. Integrity. I go with gentleness. The meek, meekness. Why integrity there? The word says the meek will inherit the earth. The meek will inherit the earth. Will inherit. God can trust that one. The meek is someone that is flexible, that is teachable. Always input, uh, open for input. The religious is there to fight. The meek is always open for input. 
A man that walks with integrity is a man. Give me a definition. It's a man that doesn't just stand on his viewpoint. He's not just a man that goes the left and to the right. It's a man that you can trust. It's a man that you can talk to and you know he will bring it before, the, before God. It's a man that tomorrow will say, Holy Spirit, is this really what you are saying? It's a man that has a desire to be dependent on God. It's a man that walk in humility because knowing without God I cannot do this. Altogether we put that it's meekness. Scripture said there wasn't a man on earth, I'm not talking about Jesus, a man on earth, so meek than Moses. There was a meekness in Moses. There was a teachableness. There was an openness to do the most freakiest thing. Because he was just changeable. He was just open for whatever God wants. Whatever God wants. Whatever his will. But he knew God in such a way, face to face, as a friend. But out of that friendship, out of that face to face, out of receiving the blueprints of foundations for the church and for the nation of God, that man, that man that changed God's mind, with all respect, Lord, you cannot kill them because of your fame. It must be all about your fame, Lord. So we, we, we're not going to gain any if you're not coming with. We don't go with the blessings. We don't go for a breakthrough. We don't go with a vision. We don't go with the promises of God. We don't go with that. If you are not coming with. On the one side that. But on the other side even. He has walked so intensely with God. And just one small mistake. Striking the rock two times. And you will not enter Canaan. But he wasn't disappointed. Because life was Christ. I was gain. That was the maturity level of Moses. May God help you. May God help me in that sense that you will walk with that type of integrity. Integrity is a man that is really humble and teachable. Okay. Integrity. That's quality in your life. That's quality. You have an identity in God. You have an integrity with God. And intensity. Where, where are we going? You, you know when the only one left is... Um, Kindness. Afrikaans, ik wil nou Afrikaanse anglicisme zit, maar yeah, that's not going to go good. Vriendelijkheid. You can say friendliness, but it's not actually really friendliness. This has to do with hospitality. In Jeremiah, you can write it down. Why well, you guys don't write? Oh. We will beat you up in love after the service. <laughs> With passion, yes, 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 man. Okay. <laughs> Are you <laughs> Jeremiah 31 verse 3? God says, Yes, everybody say yes. yes. Oh, everybody, let's try everybody. Yes. yes. God says, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, therefore. I have loved you with an eternal passion, everlasting love. Therefore, I've drawn you with my loving kindness. Kindness. I've drawn you with my loving kindness. The intensity in my heart is for you to be with me. Intensity, kindness. Let's look at intensity in the world. That guy is very intense. That means you keep your distance. You know, you, 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 you bring correction in his life. Woo! You see some intensity. You, <clears throat> you see some intensity. So many times intensity in a foundation is with anxiety, stress, crisis, problems to be solved, actually mean control. Hello. And you see, uh, you, you've seen that. You know when a guy is at peace and he's walking with God, there's a certain peace. There's a certain peace. But guys, well, you, you have the issue of this, the issue of that. Man, it's very quickly the conversation is intense. You've never seen that? Okay. Now kindness is something more with, than peace. Through peace you're coming into the place of 
kindness. When you bring kind, uh, peace in your life, that you, you make progress through peace, and peace protect your heart, and peace protect your mind, eh? Philippians 4, 7. Peace beyond all understanding. When peace work in you, work in you, work in you, you work with peace and the peace work in you, then what is happening? There's a kindness in you. That's not a plastic Tupperware smile. There's a kindness in you that you can be at home with God, uh, God with you, and people with you. There's a hospitality in you that is not good manners, but it is a quality of God. A hospitality as a quality of God. And with this welcome home hospitality, God says, I've drawn you with my welcome hospitality. The hospitality that is in me. The welcome that I have in my heart for you. I've drawn you with that. And that is the intensity in God. I have an eternal passion. Therefore, I've drawn you with the intensity of my heart, my loving kindness. Oh, man. May God help you. May God help me. That will be the definition of intensity in my life. Because sometimes there's an intensity that I want to slaughter a man. But no. You don't have a slaughterhouse. It is a house where people are welcome. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. I'm going to leave it there for the sake of time. Now, this is the fruit of the Spirit. You know, like the dove with nine feathers. And let's not go into that object lesson for six years old. Nine feathers, nine feathers on the other side also. The dove has two wings, you know. So it's ninefold fruit. And then there's the nine gifts of the Spirit also. Interesting. Let's not make a big theology out of that, but. For the children of the church, yes. So, the next point. Okay. Application, information, declaration. What are we talking about? We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. For that, what is profitable? To the one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. Another message of the knowledge. And to another, faith. That's the three, three of the nine gifts. But what are we talking, man? Remember, everybody can have the knowledge of God. Everybody can have wisdom. Everybody must have faith. All of this. But then there's a way that Holy Spirit wants to make the yoke easy, the burden light in your life. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. The Spirit will reveal truth. And truth will set you free. Amen. But we wara wara and we carrying and we have a lot of stuff in our life so many times because we don't allow the Holy Spirit to help us. But many times He will help us through the gifts. Now just remember the end of 1 Corinthians 12. He says, cover the gifts. He says, pursue the gifts in chapter 14, also the first verse. So there's a command not just to walk in the gifts. There's a command not just to be involved with the gifts. There's a command that you, with uh, eagerness, eagerly pursue. Other translation, I think, uh, amplified. With eagerness, push with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When last did you eagerly pray and say, God, I want to more work and to walk more with the gifts of the Spirit in my life. That you make a choice to be eager to pray in tongues. Make a choice to be eager to prophesy. To be eager, even in your day was, even in what you experience. Eager to hear his voice accurately. Okay, so the one, first one, a word of wisdom. Wisdom is always about application. Holy Spirit wants to bring application. When you hear a word like today, Holy Spirit is so ready to bring application. How many of teaching that you heard on a Sunday have you really applied in the week that you can say, I, I, I have a testimony about it? Then you are walking in the word of wisdom, one of the gifts of the Spirit. But otherwise, are you not going to pursue the gifts? Pursue the gifts is not if you understand everything now, even as you are sitting. 
I told you before with Dr. Jonathan, my spiritual father, with a network that we are flowing in with um, in Malaysia. Then we have sessions, two-hour sessions sometimes. And we start the morning early, you finish the, in the evening, 10 o'clock. Yeah. And, uh, but then in what he says, to write down in Holy Spirit, what are you saying even more to me? And quickly write a side note, one, two, three things that I must go back to, to look at it further again. Or he says something, and I remember something about, even in ministry, look at that. Or something about the past, or something that I realized I need to sort out with some other donkey, not a human being, uh, or whatever, I cannot call a name. But practically apply, applying, what must I do with this? And in the process of that, oh, this is needed with us as leaders. God, forgive me. I repent right there. But show me what, how to bring application so that this will become a foundation in hello in the ministry like spending time with god and suddenly there's not enough word there's not enough word in the school you want to move prophetically and proclaim my name you want to be creative with my with who i am but you don't have enough word to be creative with me to be declaring my word prophetic and creativity that's the main key even with creare the main calling God said, there's not enough word. First of all, repent. And then secondly, apply from the place of repentance. Apply the word. What must I do? So what must I do, Lord? God says, start from the beginning. I will show you the scriptures that you and they must learn, must teach, must make part of their lives. And then I start at 9 o'clock the evening, and I end at 6 o'clock the morning. From Genesis just going through page by page by page and let Holy Spirit highlight certain verses that must we must study. Application. Are you with me? So for your life, may God give you that wisdom. When we look at Solomon, he had all the wisdom in the world and the book of Proverbs, it's all about wisdom. It's all about application. How must we do this? How must we do that? Where you must you, what's the move? good word for shut up? Where you must, must be, be still? And where you must you speak? That's a man with wisdom. He know how to apply. Application. Second one, information. That's the word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. That's Jesus saying you, have, you had five husbands and the one that you live with now is not your husband. That's information. But my brother, my sister, this, the gifts of the Spirit, remember the agenda of the Spirit is the fruit, and the fruit is Jesus. So even through the gifts, the way we, the, in the charismatic movement sometimes we went so wrong, is, you know, like, that's why Paul talked, spoke to this, these Corinthians, because they were so bragging with the gifts. That's why 1 Corinthians 13 is right in the middle. 1 Corinthians 12 Showing, talking about the gifts, 1 Corinthians 14, how the gifts must at, uh, be administrated in the church and all over, but 1 Corinthians sitting in the middle. If you don't have love, you have nothing. Everything is rubbish. You tell me you prophesy, you tell me you do this, you tell me you do that, it's all rubbish. If it's not in love, it's rubbish. Uh, are you with me? So what are we talking about? Even with information, with all these gifts, Love must be the center of it. Love must be the center of it. That guy can walk in the Spirit. And as you say, even when we say, uh, when you're baptized in the Spirit, you will speak in tongues. No. Manifestation of tongues is not the first uh, proof that you are baptized in the Spirit. The power of God and boldness is the first proof. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and you will be my witnesses. And you will be my witness. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, when you gave your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit came in you. Baptism in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit come upon you. You remember? You was yeah, you are still yeah, don't 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 die now. Your flesh only. Give your neighbor a holy smack. Okay. Information. Information. 
So, information. When we planted the church, God, where are we going? I have one week, then uh, I must say, what's the church? Where is the church? What, 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 what? As I drive out of that place, um, um, a garbage church, and I have one week, and I was screaming out in my car, not tantrum, but crying out. And, uh, and immediately God said, that Baptist church where, that we got, information. Hello? Information. So God can really just guide you in so many ways in a practical, in practical, practical ways. I had a day with something like 24 kilometers, turn to the right, uh, two kilometers, stop street, uh, railway, cross, third house to the left. Oh. So long story short. You can feel frustrated, but go with the gifts of the Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is going to Put the gifts out there. Many times, my brother, my sister, you will be frustrated because it will not make sense, or it will take time, or you'll have to spend time because the gifts are also there that you are not focused on the gift, but focus on Christ. So the gifts sometimes will bring confusion so that you must reach out to Him, to Him, Jesus Christ. Are you still here? So, sitting more than a half an hour with Google Maps, where can I find now 24 kilometers with a street? After that, we'll go to the right, and then two kilometers, stop street, the railway, and after half an hour, boom, I found it. I can't remember if it was Bolfontein or Brantford or some of these, one of these. And I went with a car, Peter Jones went with me, and as I was, I said, on the, what do you call it, the gates, or whatever, he said 24 kilometers, just a few meters further. He said, turn to the right. Go. When he went two kilometers, just a little bit further, I did, I made the measurements on the Google Maps. Stop street, railway. Now we go over. Man, God wants to do something now. Are you with me? But it's knowledge that the Holy Spirit wants to give you. Life can be so much exciting if you covet the gifts, if you trust God for that type of thing to happen more. Are you with me? Later we found the third one. I've told you this story 17 times. Who heard the story? One, two, three, five. Just make as if you've never heard it before. Okay. And... Uh, and so we couldn't find the place. And then I said, oh, it's that farm there. And we went to a place, and then the, the gate was locked. The gate was locked. Now how on earth can we get there? So we go, we park there, me and Peter, we go through. And after a while we see, we saw Patronchis. What is Patrona and, and Bullet, the uh, achterste goeikies, empty ones. That, that stuff. And we realize if these things are here, then there must be something maybe in a wild type of state in this place. And then we saw the the blue bull, not those play, ones playing rugby. That was a blue wild beast. Blue wild beast. That thing. And there was this one, but we heard that some of them can be like dangerous. And so the one was like, you know, doing this, you know. So Peter was stressing more than me he took my jacket and he was just throwing the jacket up and down so that he go away and then we walk and then he come and then peter jones throw this jacket and then the, we went down the hills here i hope this farmer is here because if we must walk this all this road back but we are praying tongues saying god what do you want to do Frustration, frustration when God will give you information. With the gifts of the Spirit, sometimes you will be frustrated. My brother, my sister, you will be frustrated. Uh, so, long story short, after about an half an hour to an hour of walking, there's nobody there. So we have to walk back. Uphill, you know, it was like Table Mountain, you know, going and went back through the through the door, uh, the gate. Let's not talk about a lot of stuff. Okay, what must we do? You have paper, you have pen, write a message, 
number. God has given me a word for you. We believe uh, we came here in a supernatural way. We just said it like that, like it was. Put it in the gate. Normal farm gate. Two days later, phone call. No, we, we received that message. We want to come and see you. Oh, just like that. Boom. Came to see me. Husband, wife, child. Oh, okay. Child in homeschool knows my wife. The, the wife says, no, but we are on every Friday we are here. We're having art. One of the seven kids at the church having art classes. That in such a supernatural way, get out there. The lady knows Nikki very well. I said, I talked about 10 questions, uh, prophetic counseling. No, we, we wanted to do that long ago. Nikki explained that. Everything I say was already connected, 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 connected. But they're on the way to immigrate to Australia. I just spoke to those guys. That was so amazing with that prophetic session. They were just... But the husband got hurt in the church. So me in nature and the Lord, that's all. No, nothing about these religious guys. Blah, 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 blah. He says, I don't want to do this. Five questions and answers, prophetic session. I say, it's okay. I'm going to give five answers to your wife. For maybe in five years or ten or twenty years time, you have five questions before the Lord. And the Lord know now what you're going to ask in twenty years. So I'm going to give the five answers <laughs> to her for that day. Okay, I'll write questions. <laughs> and he wrote questions. <laughs> But God just spoke in such a special way to that man. Ah, it was just awesome. But what am I saying? Guys, man, it was frustration. It was frustration. We sit on a farm, but it was frustration. It wasn't me led by the Spirit and then we got the farm. No. Yes, I felt in my heart knowledge that I must come to that seven hectare plot there on the other side. I felt and I laughed at this thing, but nothing happened. And after we got the miracle uh, through the church that we received there, then I come in here again and I, and I screaming out, not screaming, but saying, God, I'm wasting my time. You gave us the miracle church. Why am I here again? So many times you will be in situations, God, why am I here? You go with the Spirit, you will be frustrated sometimes. Why am I here? Why this? Why that, Lord? But then don't react on the why and what is vip yo? Throw a tantrum and just get out of the thing. Go with God. Go with God. So we prayed for the uh, uh, whole region and God wants to do something in the region, minister to the farmers. Um, but I'm sitting, looking at a place where a million people will sit, right in front. There at Green Bali, looking at a piece of ground where a million will sit. I said, God, you want to do something. There's something about this region. God, you're going to use, you're going to use people here. You're going to do something here. We claim this area for you in Jesus' name. But Ahmed, it's just a stupid prayer, if I can must say it like that in the flesh. He said, maybe something just to comfort myself for the frustration and that I don't have a cooking clue what must happen. Really, I don't have any idea what must happen. But the Spirit gives the unction to come here every time, 20, 25 times. So go and sit because of frustration, not because of led by the Spirit. Because of frustration, go and sit at a city planner. Can we build a church and a Christian school and a campground uh, on a seven hectare plot? Is there place enough? But just, just so by the way, just for interesting sake, find out whose ground is this. This. Go with it, even though you feel frustrated. And afterwards, remember, we have only 20 working people in the church at that stage. The only one who knew whose ground it was God organized that. He was in a meeting with me. He said, do you not know whose ground it is? I said, no, I'm, I know. He said, is that guy in the church? Out of the 20, nobody has ground except one guy. And the one guy has one piece of ground. And it is this ground. Where I feel, okay, must I found the guy? I'm cut off some there at the crosses where we put up uh, 10 hectares and make your price. Don't feel it's for the church. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
two, three days ago, God said, we must give the ground to the church. I wanted to say thank you, but as a pastor, I said, go and pray again. <laughs> and then pray, and they came back, and boom, 7,000 rand and 215 hectares for the ministry, for free. But how? Because I was just led by the Spirit in peace. Not at all. Uh, 3,215 times frustrated. Irritated. Discouraged. Coming here every time, but it, nothing works out. But if you can, if you're willing to go through those stuff, God can do such a lot of miracles. Will you allow God to do that? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to bring frustration so that you can cry out to God that He will be the one doing the miracle? Okay, you are, yeah, you're nearly gone. That was information. Information. Application. Information. You write day words, it can be a lot, it can be information. Are you with me? Some prophetic, some just information. Okay, right in December, for July the 19th, Mary wife gets children. I think it's for somebody sitting in front of me, not for me. I'm 39. I'm going to be a Paul now. No wife and kids. I had no faith. I didn't pray for a wife or kids anymore. Nothing, man. For two years already. I'm finished with that. There's prophecy, but I gave it back to the Lord. You know. And then Dr. Jonathan David give a prophecy. Find your wife now. Just like that. So I said, I responded. I said, that's easy to say. <laughs> that was my response. But I prayed afterwards, took two leaders, and even you feel whatever. Go with God. Took two leaders. When dropping the, uh, Dr. Jonathan at the air, uh, airport, yeah, just outside, came back on the way to Naval Hill. I said, get juice, get bread. Immediately, Naval Hill, communion, I take that word in the spirit in the name of Jesus. Even though mine says, oh, I'm 39 already. Are you with me? I take it in the spirit, even though it doesn't make sense at all. Two weeks later, conference, lady there in the front, I thought she's married, I rebuked the devil, the whole conference, how the hell can you look at a married woman like that? You haven't looking at, looked even at a woman for the past 14 years uh, so intensely, never mind that, at a married woman. So look at the pastor, look at the wife, bind the devil, look at the pastor, look at the lady, bind the devil. I remember that. Oh man, I remember that. The whole four days until at the end of the conference. How are you doing? How's your husband? Most beautiful words from heaven. I'm not married. <laughs> I tell the testament like this afterwards you tell me. I never spoke like that. <laughs> I'm not married. <laughs> Five months later he married us. Man from Madagascar. I'm ah, from, from Malaysia. What am I saying guys? Frustrated, frustrated, go with God. Let him work through the Spirit. Let him work with the gifts. The first moment, the actual thing I wanted to say. So I, I feel peace. I speak to her pastor, my pastor, even though I'm 39, clear it. Clear it, clear it, man. You're never too high to lie, not to be under accountability. You with me. And all have peace. She's coming back from uh, outreach in the Kalahari. That Monday she will be on the job. Okay, that Monday. Okay. Gonna go there. What's my day with? What I wrote seven months before for that Monday. Marry wife, get children. I didn't tell her that. That would be manipulation. Prophetic manipulation. So I didn't tell her that, but... Yeah, God just did it. I said a few things, and she told, uh, told God, my, my husband must say the following. Boom, 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 boom. Whew, God help me. I said all of that. That evening, she found her dad and said, I met my husband. 
Hmm. But what am I saying? If you go with the Spirit, it's easy now to testify. But in the process, it was a major lot of frustration. Don't tantrum and abort what God wants to give you. Because you are frustrated and the gifts going to frustrate you sometimes. Declaration. Third one. That's faith. Declaration. Faith. Uh, Luther make, made a declaration of faith. When he said, the Roman Catholic Church that said, you pay to be, to be forgiven. So they had to pay to be forgiven. And there was the biggest lot of rubbish. And then this man, Luther, uh, German, I think, hey? God took him and he said, no, you are saved through faith. You will be justified through faith and grace. Nothing of this rubbish. And he made this declaration. But he, God gave him a special, I want to say, extra faith. The gift of faith. Holy Spirit, when he wants to, can give you certain. And he just gave him this faith. To go and put it there, even though if he will be slaughtered or killed. He just got it. Sometimes God will just give you the supernatural faith that you never had, but that you need for that situation. You pushed and you say, God, you said I must pursue the gifts. That means you want to give the gifts to me. God, I need the gift of faith now. I have faith and we are saved and we are pleased. God is pleased with faith and we overcome by faith. But this is specific sometimes a gift of faith for a certain breakthrough to happen. Are you with me? That you will make a declaration with what you believe. We will all pray, we, will, we, we do the thing. But sometimes there's somebody with a certain the gift of faith, so that what she's praying through that faith is, make, is shaking the heavens in a certain way. Be open to the Spirit. Number four. Demonstration. Demonstration. Talking about the gift of healing. Gift of healing is not just for healing. Gift of healing is not for healing. The disciple said, that guy who sinned that he is now like that. Jesus said, he didn't sin. He's in that state not because of sin, but for God to demonstrate his power. For God to demonstrate who he is. Are you with me? With healing. If some are not healed, no. You have no faith. The guys that are healed, you have faith. Oh, uh, be very careful. That, there's a lot of stupidity in that. <sighs> Why are some people not healed? I don't know. But the only thing I know that I realize, God wants to demonstrate himself. And he can demonstrate himself in various ways. So you receive the healing because God wants to demonstrate his power over sickness. You are not healed yet because God wants to demonstrate a man that can be with such a stability inside of him that he will say like Habakkuk, even though nothing changed, still I will rejoice in the Lord, my strength. That takes me from strength to strength and I will use this opportunity, opportunity to say, God, I love you. I stand with you. I will obey you. I will respect you. And God is demonstrating that type of work through you. God is demonstrating that type of work through you that received a certain healing. The healing and the whole context and the whole issue of healing or not healed has to do with a demonstration of who he is. And for a certain way in the time when Jesus came to earth, in a, at a certain time he, had, he demonstrated himself through all the thousands of healings and devils driven out and a lot of that type of stuff. And then when he went to the cross, he demonstrated him not in that way, but as the Lamb of God. First of all, I'm the Son of God. I'm the Son of God. They wanted to kill him because he says he's the Son of God. I'm the Son of God. But from Gethsemane, I'm the Lamb of God. And he demonstrated himself as the Lamb that will be slain. And this man that did all this powerful things as a son of God, on the cross, they mocked him. Said, ha, 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 he could help others, but what can he do now? <laughs> it's not the time to demonstrate himself as the son of God. It's time to demonstrate himself as the lamb of God to be slaughtered for the sin of the world. Allow God to demonstrate himself through your life in the way that he wants to demonstrate himself. 
Amen. Elimination, elimination, elimination. What are we talking about? Faith, gifts of healing. To another, he gives miraculous powers. Miraculous powers. Now, what is that? Because healing is a miracle, man. All these gifts are miracles. But what's the miraculous powers? This is now something like Jesus walking on the water. Miraculous powers. Now, miraculous powers, there's certain things must happen. I want to tell you last weekend's rubbish that, that should have happened, that didn't happen. There were miraculous powers involved. There were people that could pray in the Spirit and brought a restriction order over a lot of rubbish that could have happened. But there's now times, but that was to e eliminate certain things that the enemy wanted to bring in. But then there's other times that there's chaos. I mean, e uh, Ukraine prayed for a lot of stuff not to happen. And it happened. So, with miraculous signs, is to eliminate everything that is standing in God's way. Everything that is standing in God's way to do what He wants to do. What He wants to do. That what He wants to do. So sometimes certain things around you will shake, and the heavens and the earth will be shaken, and a lot of things will happen. And, but there will not be a miraculous sign through the church, because... What's happening out there must not be eliminated. It must happen so that the church will be purified. Are you with me? So there's certain miraculous signs that will happen to eliminate things that is in the way of God to establish what He wants to establish. Are you still with me? I know. I know we are doing the second part actually is to be at least an hour at another time. But we are finishing off. Elimination. Acceleration. And number six, acceleration. What's that? Prophecy. Prophecy is to stig troos bemoedig, geef vir my die Engels. Encourage, stig, stig, wat is stig. To encourage, to exhort. You, know, you understand. Why? Why to encourage? So that you can run the race even quicker. With your day with, with prophetic encouragement, with prophetic counseling, with all the prophetic, it's so that you can run the race quicker with more encouragement, with more. Hello, inside of you. Because you can even see more. But that is for encouragement, so that there will be acceleration. Holy Spirit wants to bring acceleration in you and through you. When you know that you know, and that one confirmed, and that one confirmed, and that one confirmed, that this is what must happen, then you are pushing with it. Through the prophetic, Holy Spirit is bringing acceleration. Allow the prophetic, especially, hey, the scripture says, cover the gifts, pursue the gifts, especially to prophesy, to bring acceleration in the church of Christ, to bring acceleration for people to run into their destiny, that what God has for them. To get out of rubbish, get into that what he has for them. Amen. Number six, seven, eight, nine. Identify. Communication, interpretation. Identify. What, uh, you must be a person that can identify a thing. You know? You know the people say, I can write a rot. See them from my English. I smell a, smell a mouse. Rat. I smell a rat. You know? Who had ever a, a stinking rotten rat in a roof or somewhere? How oh, wow, wow, wow. I smell a rat. Okay, now that's not a scripture. Okay. Identify. It's the gift for the distinguishing of spirits. We see him in the And another distinguishing between spirits. Whew, that sometimes we can be so deceived. Remember the deception in the end time even more. Even more, even more. But when the devil came, he didn't come with all the chwaras from hell. He came with scripture to Jesus. Came with scripture. So the devil can give you some scriptures, you know. He can give you some holy ideas. But you must distinguish who is speaking. Remember, the, the apostles walked, and there was this lady, and she was just screaming out, This is men of God. This is men of God. Listen to them. This is men of God. Listen to them. And a few days later, the apostle was not satisfied anymore. He drove out the devil. How on earth? 
They, that lady didn't say, kill them, slaughter them, they are rubbish, they're talking rubbish. That lady spoke exactly the truth. She said, these are men of God, listen to them. I mean, the father said, this is my son, obey him. How far off can you be? <laughs> That's perfect, the word. But they, the gifts to distinguish what spirit is speaking. So that at that moment, you just drove out the devil, man. Oh, may God help you to understand that. So that you will identify what is from God, what is not from God. You can have a word from God. You can have a word from God. You can stand on the promises. You can stand on the vision that he gave. You can stand on the dream. But the devil can you remind you of that. And you think he's God because he's coming in your memory. But it is the devil reminding you so that you can go in the wrong time into something that was godly. That what was from God and you go and mess it up because you went in the wrong timing. Identify. Holy Spirit will bring it to you. Communication. Praying in tongues. Last two. Communication. Praying in tongues. So the praying in tongues. A communication. A red, uh, a hotline to heaven. And for this hotline to heaven, God must make sure. Who see a iemand van iemand for a sucker in Engels? Taking you for a ride. Or something like that. God can take you for a ride with praying in tongues. Because you think you're praying because you're going through this situation. But meanwhile, you're praying intercession for a guy in Morocco or for a church in Morocco. They're going to be uh, attacked by, by some other group. And, and you need, he needs a, a man with a focus on God that will pray in tongues. And you don't know when you are interceding for any person on this earth, any church, any nation on this earth. You're putting yourself available as communication, as intercessor for that. He's taking you for a ride with the praying in tongues. But other times, you're praying in tongues because you're trusting God for this, for this, for this to happen. For this to happen. And you know, God's will is there. Now you're praying for this to happen. You're thinking there. But God is, God is doing this. He's, he's catching you. <laughs> he's catching you. You are praying all the way. Boom! And at a certain time, if you're under the guidance of the Spirit and you have a release and you stop praying and you just feel, I don't have peace anymore about this. I think I must do this. But meanwhile, the praying in tongues did this. And you had to pray in tongues, not two minutes, but 17 minutes, 12 seconds. And after that, the Holy Spirit gave a release. Because in your spirit it is set. And you stop praying and your mind is just dissatisfied. That you don't feel peace anymore to do that. And you just, I think I must do this. And you, see, you think after you prayed and, and afterwards you started to speak about something else. I, I don't know if I must still do that. I must do that. But meanwhile, <laughs> praying in tongues, God was realigning you all the way. Well, you think you were praying about that. Communication. God is giving you a gift. And it's a gift that you will not go just with your own perspective, narrow mind way of praying. He's giving you a gift that can open up in this connection between you and heaven. That is so supernatural. So supernatural. So supernatural. Are you with me? I mean, when we're, uh, this example of me and Peter... When I got in the car, it was praying in tongues immediately. We went through all the way there, all the way through praying in tongues. I said, no, no speaking. We are just praying in tongues. Even there, all the way down, <sighs> and all the way up, over the hill, it was praying in tongues. And sometimes just start to pray in tongues, man. Okay? Because you're opening the communication between you and God. You never know what can happen. I had to tell you a story about another guy, but no. Uh, they outreach in Botswana, and these guys, they can pray in tongues, and they came to this tribe unreached and uh, don't know what to do, but, so they started to pray in tongues. 
And there was this lady, looked very freaky, very demonic, there, very haha, wara, mampara, something uh, outside of the village. And they went to her, they felt they must go to her, and they just went in and, uh, you know, tried to explain while praying in tongues. And later she cracked up, fell down, and, and they saw that there's healing. And in some long story way, it came out that one of the one's tongue became the language of the village. And she heard the whole gospel and she repented, gave her life to Christ. And she stood up, walked into the village and spread the gospel, spoke the gospel and they repented. And these guys could still not speak to them. <laughs> Man, it was some guys in South Africa, they went to Botswana. There's amazing testimonies out there about a lot of stuff. And when you pray in tongues, your soul is not at peace. Your soul feels frustrated. You went through that. You remember what we said? You go and pray for an hour or two in tongues. Later, you feel so frustrated, you feel like you can freak out. But when you break through, they can become, they, they can come such an amazing supernatural peace. Amen. All right. That was a communication interpretation. Interpretation, last one. Interpretation of the tongue. Many times, somebody would give a tongue. I know Vivian did it also here in the church, but we need it more. So somebody could give a specific tongue. Now this is, he gives to whoever he wants to, whenever he wants to. Now people say, no, so God don't want to give tongues to everybody. No, he wants to give tongues to everybody. That is in chapter 14, another time, that's a devotional tongue, a voice, the, 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 the language of your spirit. That's a different type of tongue. This is in the church, and we better push into that more. When you would rise up and you give a tongue, and you speak in tongues, and now there must be interpretation of the tongue. But the interpretation is not a prophetic word from God. No. It's you speaking to God. If it's God from God to you, that's prophecy. So if somebody spoke in a tongue, it doesn't, the interpretation is not a prophetic word from the Lord. The interpretation is somebody uttering a prayer in Afrikaans, English, or one or other language. But where God wants this congregation now to pray for something specific. And through the tongue given, God is saying, focus. Holy Spirit is going to give a specific prayer that you all need to agree with, that you need to push in for. And there's a specific word. And say, thank you, Lord, for protecting us, for guiding us, for this. Because in that week, a hell of a disaster could happen with three people here. But it's, they are protected because the church were there for one another. And they were walking in the gifts. And the tongue came and the protection was prayed over that, that group. But it was prayed like this. Sometimes we sing in tongues. But maybe one of the guys singing in tongues is singing through the gifts. That is a specific tongue. And I come up or the worship leader starts to pray. But the prayer... Is based on that man who gave actually through the gift of tongues. Utter a tongue and here's the interpretation. It's not just me standing here and praying. But it was a spirit-led prayer because there was a guy that was sensitive enough to pray in tongues the utterance that God gave him. Guys, this is nine, ten hour courses. What we've done now is 20 hours course. That is in Creari. That you're actually supposed to do. But I pray that God will help you. Man, I pray that you will see that the yoke can be so much easier. The burden so much lighter. If we can allow the Holy Spirit to help us through the gifts. To help us. Come on, man. If we bought a ground like this for how many? 20, 30 years, we were still monthly paying off millions and millions and millions and millions of rands. A load on the ministry, so much lighter, so much easier. 7,000 rand for the transfer and 215 hectares for the church. God, help us, please. We need you. Holy Spirit, forgive us for sometimes not allowing you. We choose to be sensitive. We choose to respect your presence.
God, and you have a desire for the gifts to work in and through us. Holy Spirit, so many times you have an agenda and then we don't go with it. Forgive us for that, Lord. Each man and woman in this place, forgive us, Lord. Open, open it up for us, Lord. We pray. And I pray that you will bring a release so that we will understand the fruit that you bring in us, Holy Spirit, and the gifts that you want to bestow on us, that you want to bring into the dynamic of walking, walking, walking with our Father. Do that in our lives. We trust for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.